Yeah. Boom to the hay, all you sports fans out there in the tubo sphere, to you, the individual, as part of the collective. Welcome to Fast Track Sports Rack out here on Talk Radio version of the OMSR. I'm your brief but concise host, Will, the alternative has been Sports Thrill. Let's do a little show like this. Let you know the clip order coming up in the last two wherefores. But not be fancy. Brief musical intro, intro, voiceover, quickie sport rant after the highlight. So, talk briefly and concisely about continuation of a recap of the NFL draft. So, a nice little short put together. All the talking points from last week regarding Johnny Manziel. And then. On, the, on a more humorous note, where Colin puts on his social commentary hat, the type of emails coming in with regard to Michael Sam and the put a type parentheses holy for the love of Thor that kiss, and then that last little part will be proof positive. He and I have this weird sports twin telepathy going on because he'll use an analogy. Yours truly, the old Massar, used two weeks ago Wednesday when Adam Silver lowered the boat with regard to the Donald Sterling debacle. The show I did there in the sport rant, I went off on exactly the same thoughts process. And even close to the same phrase. But it predates today's show. That's being Monday, the day after Mother's Day. So we're going to put a link up there. It'll open another window. It'll start the sport rant. Don't worry, I don't have to watch the whole thing. I'm sure everybody saw the NBA press conference going on there. And that will take care of the sport rant. So nothing after the highlights coming up. So I can say, thanks for watching. No silly DIYs while you're out there. Roll clips. A guy that uh, has the talent and throws for 7,000 yards in, in two seasons in college should have some skills you could take advantage of. And coaches talk all the time about adjusting their systems and what they do to the talent they have. Well, uh, if ever that were going to be true, this, that would seem to be the case with Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel, they'll try to manage and control and manipulate him, <laughs> put him in a position. And now I agree with you that that's a very open to debate. They were worried that Houston and or Kansas City would jump ahead of them and take Johnny Manziel. And they tried to even get up into the middle of the first round but they couldn't do it, and they had to get him at number 22. It's a bad spot because that's exactly where Brandon Wheaton and Brady Quinn were picked by the Browns, and we know how that worked out. From a weather perspective. Isn't he Colt yeah, McCoy yeah. with better feet? Yeah. Kind of? It, 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 it's, it, it's very difficult to play consistently in weather that you're going to get in Cleveland. He is, to quote Bill Parcells, a celebrity quarterback. And, and that, that mantra is going to follow him. He likes the noise. Johnny Manziel is one of those guys that likes the noise. You know, I would have taken him in the first round. That kind of energy coming into that city, I'm yeah, real excited. I'm real excited to see what's going to happen. And I know there's, you know, he brings a lot of stuff with him, but when you really evaluate what he really brings with him is a, a college kid that uh, brings a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of competitiveness, and loves the game of football, which is, uh, I think, I thought it was a great picture. I'm getting a lot of emails. It's amazing. Paul Killinger. The media hoopla surrounding the Michael Sam's draft pick was a stupid political show. You can bet he wasn't kissing his teammates on the mouth in the Missouri locker room, nor will he do it in the NFL. We didn't control the draft. We had cameras set up in 50 places. We didn't even know if he was going to get drafted. The truth is, at the end, I, I said I thought he would, but I wouldn't be shocked if he wasn't. It's not a political show. It happened. We showed it. It was historic. We showed it. It's called remotes. Did they all disappear this weekend? Did somebody hijack every American television remote? Don't like it? Turn the channel. There's like 4,000 cable channels. <laughs> The draft wasn't yeah. on every channel. Seems that way. 15 seconds, turn, turn back, you're fine. You are pushing the agenda. No, Fox is pushing an agenda. MSNBC is pushing an agenda. We just televise moments like this, which often social conservatives struggle with when it initially happens. 
it was a historic moment and we aired it. It's called a remote. Don't like uh, it? Turn I the channel. emails like this. It's not the fact that ESPN showed the kiss, but they showed it over and over and over and over and over. Jeff in Biloxi, Mississippi. We show everything over and over and over and over. I mean, have you ever watched our network? Tim Tebow, Tom Brady, NFL. We show everything over and over and over. You don't have to watch it. It's called a remote. I don't watch ESPN all day. Whenever I hear the, you keep showing it, well, you keep watching it. And we're in the business of repeating content. It was only a few years ago that we stopped repeating Sports Center until like noon. We'd have an 11 o'clock, we'd replay it all day till noon, 30 times. We just recently started airing a fresh Sports Center. If I have a really good rant top of my show, I'll bring it back for the last segment of my show. When you complain that you've already heard it, thanks. Cha-ching. You watched it or heard it twice. Well, you showed it over and over. It's called a remote. Eyelids. Turn away. Go in the kitchen. Go play with your kid. I mean, we show everything. We are a repetitive network, yes, sometimes to an absolute fault. But we've got only so much sports content that drives numbers, and we've got a lot of channels. Yesterday, I jogged twice. I'm serious. I got up in the morning and jogged at a bunch of stuff. I wanted, to, I wanted to go work out again. I mean, we just, because I kept seeing the same things over and over and over and over. Kenny, you're in the herd. Go ahead. How's it going, Kenny? I'm, excuse me, Kenny. I'm kind, of, kind of nervous here. But uh, I, I just wanted to say, man, I watched the, um, the draft, and after about the third time, all I did was turn my head. You know, I got tired of seeing it, so I turned my head. That's fine. Plain That's fine. It's an easy solution. Yeah, hey, by the way, how many times did we show Johnny Manziel not getting drafted? Four, <laughs> 400? Yeah, over over. The, I mean, we, all we did was show Johnny Manziel not being drafted. Were we picking on Johnny Manziel? We didn't have this thing scripted. I'm getting all these, you guys are pushing an agenda. What, a Johnny Manziel, Tebow, LeBron agenda? We're not pushing an agenda. It's a historic moment. We had a, we had a videotape there. Uh, or a camera, and we showed it. And you know, I understand how the, the, the moment was jarring to people, to some people. Yes, I, I, yeah, you can be accepting, but a moment can be a little jarring for a young person or perhaps an older person. It doesn't make you a homophobe. It, 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 to some people, they may be a little less comfortable with certain things. I understand that. But I, I think some of you think it's like a Broadway production that we had it all timed out. We didn't know if he was going to get drafted. We didn't have a clue. We didn't know what team. We had cameras like the NFL Network and all these war rooms and all these star players, and he was absolutely, that's why I talked about him last Monday and Tuesday, he was one of the four or five players. If going into this draft there were five people you had to kind of had a camera on. Jadavian Clowney, no question. Johnny Manziel, uh, Michael Sam were the top three. Those were three noteworthy draftees. And then after that, you can, you know, you can go wherever you want. But those were the big three. By the way, the Cleveland Browns, only like the Cleveland Browns, Josh Gordon could reportedly be out for the year, drug suspension. He's their best receiver, and they didn't draft a wide receiver. They draft a quarterback. What did the Colts do this weekend? They went and got another receiver like last year when they got a receiver. And the year before with luck, they got two tight ends. Browns, you're gonna draft a franchise quarterback. Get him receiver. I'll tell you what's remarkable. If you were in Hollywood, and you were writing a script, you were doing like a sitcom about a guy like me, you're saying, okay, we got this radio host, we're gonna do a sitcom about him, okay? Yeah, it would be a great show. And then you'd be like, okay, so, we'll have a gay football player, and he'll kiss on live TV, and the talk show host has to talk about it. And they'll, like, rub cake in their face. It'll make some people a little uncomfortable. Okay, then, there'll be this team that's been bad forever in the NBA. They finally get good, and they get into this amazing series, and their owner gets caught being a racist, and all their stars are black. People would go, oh, come on, that's not believable. That's outrageous. That's not going to happen. Yeah, it happened this week. It's amazing what's happening. I mean, if you were writing a script for a sitcom that I starred in, and you gave me the Michael Sam story and the Donald Sterling story, nobody would believe it. The truth is stranger than fiction. I'll tell you what's amazing. 
Colin just said what I said back on the show done for Adam Silver's reaction to Donald Sterling on that sport rant. So this is, at the very least, a perfect example of when I say at times on these reviews of The Herd how Colin and I think exactly alike. Because he just used the same example. Now, is it possible Colin is a secret viewer? <clears throat> I seriously doubt it. Guy's too busy. But I will say there is one of you subs out there. You can't get enough Colin Coward or The Herd. You're giving a thumbs up before... Anybody's even seen the video. Seriously, I've seen some of the reviews of the herd that I do with a thumbs up. Nobody's watched it. Not what he did, what the old Massar took from it, and the review. So yeah, fact is stranger than fiction. Many, many times. Yeah, so we'll have Barbara Walters interviewing an NBA owner's wife. She's going to divorce him because he's crazy, and then, then, then she'll take over the team, or maybe the owner's girlfriend will, who, who turned him in on a wiretap. Oh, this is, America's gonna love this show. Yeah, but it's not believable at all. Sing it on and on and on and on and on. The beat don't stop until the break of dawn. I sing it on and on and on and on and on like a hot butter to pop, 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 to